I'm Rob Greenhouse and today we're going to introduce the new 3DI Helix Mod Cell. So this latest Helix Mod Cell is made solely of 3DI. Uh, we've uh, removed the, uh, the Dacron Luff Tube and now we have a fully moulded sail. So you can see from both the deck sweeper and the Luff Tube, we have continuous 3DI cloth. The deck sweeper is fully integrated into the sail. So at the lower batten, the, uh, the, the sail splits in two without a seam and then forms the deck sweeper. The luff tube of this sail is also integrated into the sail. Uh, the, the, the 3DI cloth just continues forward, forming this luff tube. And the only seam in the whole sail is up the front of the sail. So what we're creating is a continuous sail without any seams or any distortions. So looking here, you can see how the, uh, the 3DI blank just continues forward all the way to the front of the sail. So whereas previously we used to have a luff pocket sewn on here, now we've just got a continuous cloth, which creates a very smooth shape. So looking inside the luff tube, you can see that the original piece of cloth, which used to hold the camera and juices, is no longer there. The, the sail splits in two and then just wraps around the mast, forming one continuous piece of cloth. We have fibre passes going throughout the sail, but they're, they're built up in batten passes, in obviously all the battens, and then we have our helix structure up the luff of the sail. With this helix sail, we've tried to move away from the camber inducers. The reason of this is we felt that there was a big improvement to be made here, and that is with the camber inducers not creating a fair sail shape. So we've moved to uh, a split batten to try to create a smoother sail shape uh, throughout the sailing range. The split battens sit on the back of the rig, not dissimilar to the original camber and juice battens, but um, obviously without a camera juicer, we just use this small batten cup to, uh, to hold the front end of the battens. But th with this method, we can produce a much smoother curve without the issues of the camber and juicer trying to straighten out. So when you get your new sail, the first thing that needs doing is the batten ends need um, inserting into the sail. So we've, we've got simple uh, six batten cups, which the split battens go into. Um, that's all very, very straightforward. The, um, there's a webbing strap that runs down the luff of the sail, which runs down inside the sail and these batten cups need to be threaded onto this luff. These batten ends get threaded onto the webbing strap like this. I then, I then adjust the positioning of the, of the batten ends so they line up with the battens. This can be adjusted once the sail is rigged and when, when you're uh, fully rigged and the boat is on its side, you can then tweak the position of these carefully. The idea of this strap is to stop the, the, uh, the batten ends moving up or down. Once all your cams are threaded onto the strap externally, I then thread them down inside the luff of the sail. Position all my batten ends on the front end of the batten pockets. It doesn't have to be exact, but within, within a centimetre or two. And then it's time to put the battens in. So batten number one is also a split batten. However, this doesn't have a batten end. So this just goes into a soft pocket in the luff tube. So this top batten is a little bit tricky. It has an offset batten pocket, one on each side of the sail. So there isn't much access, but you put your hand in and you insert the lower side of the batten into its pocket. Once the lower side of the batten pocket is inserted, you can then bring the batten in a little further and insert the upper side. And there we have it, that batten's now in. And then, and then you go to the back end and put the, put the rocket adjuster on as normal and finalise the batten tension. You've, you've threaded on your battens onto the webbing strap following the, num the numbering system. This top batten is a much smaller, much smaller batten end, so we've just got to make sure we get them in the right position. 
One very important thing is that we don't cut these battens. These battens are cut to length. Batten number two being inserted as per normal from the back end of the sail. Once I'm 90% of the way in or, or the rocket adjuster is just going in, I then go to the front of the sail. Next stage is I, I just push the, the batten end inside, open up the zip, and then I can see my, my batten end here. Then I just simply insert it into the batten cup. And then I go to the back end and simply put it onto the, onto the, onto the loops. Now these battens will seem loose at the moment because obviously they're relying, they're relying on the mast to give them tension. So until the mast goes in, these battens will be loose. Batten two going in, again, split batten. As we go down the sail, this split in the battens gets a little bit longer just to uh, keep the camber in the right place. So again, inserting from the back. <coughs> uh, batten end number two. This cup size is getting slightly larger again. Again, I just pop it in. I try to keep the twists out my webbing strap, but if you get a couple of twists in it, it's not the end of the world. It, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the most critical thing with the webbing strap is not to get your mask wrapped around it, but that's pretty difficult to do. So batten seven, the bottom batten, has a where the luff tube gets much wider. So the luff tube down here is, is nearly half a metre wide. So inside here we have two small loops that the batten needs to pass through. There's one on each side of the sail. So the split needs to pass through these loops, one on each side, before it goes to the batten cup. So here's the batten passing through those two small loops. The tail of the webbing, I just push down inside the luff sleeve, but this can be tied down to the boom with a piece of elastic if you choose. This, this is now how I leave my sail. I wouldn't take those battens out again. So the mast goes into the sail, like any other moth sail. From the bottom, we pass the mast up the luff tube. Again, keeping the mast above all the battens. I think a few things to just be careful of here is that you don't pass the mast through the split in the batten. And also, as you get towards the top, you don't start trying to wrap the mast around that webbing strap. Generally, it's pretty good, but I have had occasionally just catching the tip of the mast on the webbing strap. So I just pass the mast from the bottom and you can see the tip of the mast as it goes up. I keep it quite far back. Obviously that's, and then as you get further up, normally, normally I have to go up when I get to about here. So I've passed the mast all the way up to batten three now. And then I just manually just bring it forward keeping it above these battens here. I normally just look in the zip so I can see that I'm above all the split battens. And then I pass it up, all the way up to batten two, which is our top batten end, top full length batten. And now I make sure the mast passes inside the cup. This one I normally slide on. So now the mast is inside the cup and I finish off just sliding the mast all the way to the top. Once I've got the mast all the way to the top, I just work that luff sleeve down quite hard. It's a, it's a stiffer fabric than the uh, Dacron luff tubes, so it is a bit harder to work down, but just work down gently from the top. I then normally just put batten two on, which is, is done in the same way as the camber juices. You just put a small twist in and it drops onto the back of the rig. And then as usual, I work down the luff, making sure the, the, uh, the shroud point pulls out. I then leave these battens off, battens uh, four, five, and six. Just leave them off the rig until we're ready to go on the boat. I keep pulling down. Yeah, sometimes I put batten six on as well, just to help with me locating my spreader bracket through the hole. So I get my, once my spreader bracket's through the hole, this batten can be put on quite easily. 
I've pulled my spreader bracket through the, uh, through the gap and I've, and I've put Bannon 6 on. I leave the rest of the Bannons off until we've got the mast in the air. Next stage is putting the mast up. Um, this is done in exactly the same way as a conventional sail. So I just bring the sail to the boat as per normal. Often these battens will fall off the mast, but I just leave them until the mast is up. The, the top two or three will stay on, but sometimes these ones through the middle of the sail will pop off. And that's purely because we've got no mast bend yet. So um, everything's, nothing's really loaded. At this stage, the only batten tension we can really worry about is the top batten. The rest of the battens are reliant on the mast being up and, uh, and the rig being loaded. So I just make sure I pull just about all the creases out the top batten, but we'll look at it again once we're rigged. Now I've got my uh, boom, my vang set up and my four stay on. I'm going to roll the boat over and put those battens on. Now my mast is on, my four stays on, my vang's loaded, I've got some mast bend. So now I'm going to put these battens on and it, it depends. Sometimes this one falls off as well, but in this case it hasn't. But if, if this one was off, which I'll, I'll take it off now, if I can. Um, so you simply just go into the batten, put your hand inside, make a small twist in the batten and pop it on. And then I start loading up my van before putting the Cunningham on. So one of the changes of this sail is that we're only pulling the Cunningham now from two loops on the bottom of the sail. So my Cunningham just run, runs along the floor of the boat. I have two hooks, one that clips on each side of the bottom of the sail. Now I've got my uh, my Cunningham on, my boat's rigged. Um, I'm, a, you know, final stages to do up the little zips, but I'm just going to have a little look inside and check that the batten ends are in the right spot. You can see this one is a little high at the moment. So I'm just going to push it down, and this is just where you just got to get that strap the right length. You can just feel the straps just about right there now. But you just want to adjust these cams on this. Uh, so you just want to adjust these batten ends on the strap until the uh, until the batten end is sitting in front of the pocket. And I'm down on my final batten, and I can feel there's quite a bit of slack in the batten in the, in the webbing. So I'll just work the webbing down. And there we go. I've pulled that webbing tight. This bottom batten has got these little tags to keep the batten in place. Then I just tuck the webbing inside and then do my zips up. Tensioning the battens in this sail is a little bit different to the previous generation of sails. Now, now the, the, uh, the battens are working directly onto the mast, so we can really change the shape of the sail with batten tension. So as we go down the sail, we're just going to try to take the creases out. All these battens are cut to length, so you should just better put them in and then literally just give them one or two turns. So here we can see as I, as I tension this batten, the creases slowly pull out of it but also what we can also see is shape being driven into the sail. And that there is definitely ability with these sails to drive shape into the, into the sail by, with, with the batten tension. And likewise, as it gets windier, you can definitely flatten the top of the sail by just softening the batten slightly. As I get further down the sail, I probably do put a little more tension on them, just, just because they need a bit more tension to pull the creases out. So I, I would say in general, they're tighter as I get down the sail partly because the batten's bigger and there's more camber in the sail, so they, they just get a bit more load in them. Once all my battens are done, I'm ready to go sailing. I'm putting the boat back up right.